Question number six. In the process of reconciling its bank statement for April, Donahue Enterprises accountant compiles the following information. So we've got cash balance per books on April uh, would be uh, 6190. Deposits in transit uh, at month end 1470. Outstanding checks at month end 790. Bank charge for printing checks 130. Notes receivable and interest collected by the bank on Donahue's behalf $600. A check paid to Donahue during the month uh, by customer is returned by the bank uh, as NSF non-sufficient funds for 650 the adjusted cash balance per books per books on April 30th is what well here's what's relevant you want to know what things that the books do not know about until they receive their bank statement so what things from this list do they not know about you start with the book balance of 6190 that's what the books say we have and then you want to add the uh, collection of the note and interest, $600. That's something that the books will not know about until they open up their bank statement. Also, the bank service charge and charge for printing checks uh, for 130 That's something that the books will not know about until they open up their statement. And also, the NSF charge of 650 That's something that they won't know about. So you'll add the collection of the note, you'll subtract out the bank uh, service charge, and you also subtract out the NSF check. So the adjusted book balance will be $6,010. Number seven, in the process of reconciling its bank statement for January, looks like Maxie's clothing accountant uh, compiles the following information. It looks like they got a cash balance per books on January 30th of 51.25. Deposits in transit at month end 1880. Outstanding checks at month end 560. Bank service charge 29 dollars. Uh, EFT automatically paid monthly, not yet recorded by Maxi uh, 460. And NSF check returned on a customer account 305. The adjusted cash balance per books on January 31st is what? Well, we're looking for things that the books did, did not know about uh, until they open up their bank statement. So you start with 4725. And let's see. Well, I had to stop this because there were some typos big time on this problem. Uh, so it looks like uh, we're going to start with 5125 as our beginning book balance. We're going to subtract off the service charges of $29 and we're also going to subtract off the uh, EFT charges um, of 460 and then also the NSF charge by the bank of 305 and this gives us an adjusted book balance of $4,331. Okay, let's look at number eight. Uh, Ryan Company deposits all cash receipts on the day they are received and makes all cash payments by check. Ryan's June bank statement shows $22,361 uh, on, on deposit in the bank. That's what his bank statement shows. Ryan's uh, comparison of the bank statement to its cash account revealed the following. We have deposits in transit of $2,250, outstanding checks of $1,053, Additionally, a $46 check written and recorded by the company correctly was recorded by the bank as a $64 deduction. So the bank took out too much money. The correct amount was $46. The bank took out or deducted $64 from their checking account. The adjusted cash balance per bank uh, records should be what? Well, we'll start with the bank balance of $22,361. That was the beginning up here. We're going to add deposits and transit of $22,50. Subtract out outstanding checks of 1053 and then we're going to add back this bank error, uh, 46 versus 64. This looks like a transposition error, and the difference between 64 and, and 46 is $18. We're going to add that back, and all transposition errors are some uh, are always equally divisible by nine, and you can see that the 18 is. So the adjusted book balance is $23,576. 
actually I should have said the adjusted bank balance but if the reconciliation is right it doesn't make any difference if that's the correct re reconciled amount because the books and the bank should agree so but technically that should say adjusted book balance 23,576. Question number nine. Claiborne Company deposits all cash receipts on the day they are received and makes all cash payments by check. At the close of business on May 31st, its cash account shows a debit balance of $23,025. That's what the cash account per the books show. Um, the Claiborne's May bank statement shows $20,600. So the bank shows $20,600. The books show $23,025. Determine the adjusted cash balance uh, using the following information. What they really mean is they, well, they want the, the correct reconciled balance. Same thing. But we also have deposits in transit, 7000 outstanding checks, 5800 bank service fees not yet recorded by the company, $85. A NSF check from a customer not yet recorded by the company, $1,140. And so... We want the reconciled balance or the adjusted cash balance. So we have on this reconciliation a bank side and a book side. And we're going to record things, either add or deduct, things that the bank or the books do not know. So on the bank side, what the bank doesn't know about will be the following. Deposits in transit of $7,000 and outstanding checks of $5,800 will be subtracted to get an adjusted book balance or reconciled balance of $21,800. The uh, book balance starts off unadjusted $23,025 and we're going to subtract off things or make adjustments to things that the books do not know about and they don't know about the bank service charge of uh, $85 which will be subtracted and they also didn't know about this NSF check of $1,140 and when you subtract those two things out you get a book balance of 21800 and so both sides agree so it looks like we had now have a reconciled balance of $21,800. Question number 10. Franklin Company deposits all its receipts on the day they are received and makes all cash payments by check. At the close of business on August 31st its cash account shows a debit balance of 17,162 Franklin's August bank statement shows 17,437 on deposit in the bank determine the adjusted cash balance using the following information so we have deposits in transit 5700 outstanding checks 4700 bank service fees not recorded by the company yet $90 and the bank collected on a note receivable not yet recorded by the company for $1,365 the adjusted cash balance should be on the bank side we start with 17,437 we're we'll add uh, deposits to transit 5,700 subtract out outstanding checks 4,700 and get an adjusted book balance of 18,437 on the book side we'll start with 17,162 subtract off bank service fees of uh, $90 and we're going to add the note collected by the bank on behalf of this company of 1365 and this gives us on both sides the reconciled balance of 18,437. Question number 11. Easton Company deposits all cash receipts on the day they are received and makes all cash payments by check. And I've been saying this on every one of these problems and this really is uh, an example of a good internal control procedure making sure you always do this make sure that all the cash goes in the bank the same day it's received uh, and at the close of business on June the 30th its cash account shows a debit balance of 63,209 that's per the books Easton's June bank statement shows 60,749 on deposit in the bank determine the adjusted cash balance uh, using the following information we have deposits in transit 4700 we have outstanding checks of 2225 uh, a check printing fee not yet recorded by the company $21 interest earned on the bank account not yet recorded by the company $36 so we start on the bank side we'll start with 60749 and we will add deposits in transit 4700 subtract off outstanding checks of 2225 
and get an adjusted book balance of 63,224. On the book side, we will start with 63,209. That was the debit balance of cash per the books. Uh, we'll add interest earned to $36, subtract off check printing of $21, and get the same 63,224 adjusted or reconciled cash balance.